Hey church, it's Pastor Sarah. Today is Tuesday, August 4th, and I want to talk with you about, well, what everybody's talking about these days, namely how we handle ourselves during coronavirus. Have you noticed that different people have different ideas about how much caution to use during this ongoing, never-ending global pandemic? Some people never leave their homes. Others are out and about all the time. Some people wear a mask anytime they think that they might encounter another person. Others only when it's specifically required. And some people don't even wear it when it's specifically required. Some people limit their exposure to small groups of trusted friends. And others are pretty comfortable in large gatherings. So with all that variety, it makes it kind of difficult to know what's the right thing to do in any given situation. The bank, the grocery store, the ballpark, the gym, they all have different rules. They've all had to balance out the amount of reasonable risk that they're willing to take with those who use their facilities. Now, we've had to do that here too, of course. And our rule, I think you know, is anytime you're in the building, and of course, you know that you're welcome in the building, right? Just give Molly a call ahead of time so we make sure there's somebody available to answer the door. But anytime you're in the building, everybody wears a mask over mouth and nose. And the only exception to this, we wear them all the time, the only exception would be if you're in your own office as a staff person all by yourself. Then you can choose to remove your mask if you wish. Now, some people think that's too much caution. Some people think that's too much risk. In the end, I hope that we err on the side of caution and that our safety measures turn out to have been more than enough. I hope and pray that nobody ever gets sick from coming to our church building or from being around church people. Really, that's my prayer every single day. But part of what's so hard, of course, is, is just not knowing for sure. And I know that a lot of you are feeling the same way in various parts of your own lives. Like, do we send the kids back to school or do we keep them home? Do we return to the office or do we keep working from the living room? Do we go to be with somebody that we know is lonely or grieving or hurting? And if we go see them, can we hug them? Can we touch them? Or do we really need to keep a six to 20 foot distance? Do we get together with friends? And if so, inside or outside? And what if some of them are wearing masks and others of them are not? Golly, don't you just wish that the answer was right here in the Bible for us? Like in the book of, I don't know, First Precautions, chapter 2, something like that. Uh, Thou shalt maintain thy distance from thy neighbor, and the distance shall be unto two cubits. You know, something like that. But coronavirus isn't in the Bible. Nor is global pandemic. Nor are masks or hand sanitizer. The answers to these what should we do questions are not going to be found in here. Well, at least not directly. But Proverbs 3, 5 does say, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. And Philippians 2, 4 reads, let each of you look to not your own interests, but to the interests of others. And the Apostle Paul has this really interesting section in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, where he says, Essentially, look, friends, I know that some of you don't see any danger in certain behaviors like eating meat from the market without worrying too much about where that meat came from. But you need to know that some of your church family members are really troubled by this. It makes them nervous. It feels very risky. So if it hurts or frightens your fellow Christian, just don't do it. Even if it feels overly cautious to you, do what helps others grow in faith, not what makes it harder for them. Now, all those scriptures are in here, as well as many more that speak to how it is that we live in Christian community with one another, even though there's nothing in here about coronavirus. And you know that as United Methodists, we balance out our reading of scripture with tradition, namely, how have those who walked before us in faith handled crises like these. Reason, what does science tell us about how this thing spreads and what are best practices for preventing an outbreak in our community? 
and experience, including our own experience of prayer. How's the Holy Spirit leading us right now? And after we consider all these, then we just make the best decisions that we know how to make. Sometimes it's not easy. A lot of times we doubt ourselves. We don't always get it right. But if we can walk gently with each other, like Paul suggests, refraining from judgment, but walking in love, doing what seems best for others, not just for ourselves, offering grace to those who do it differently than we do, then surely God will help us see this thing through. I do believe that God is helping us now. And I know because I've spent a lot of time praying for wisdom and guidance and discernment over these last few months, maybe even more so than I did before. So that's probably a good thing. Can we maybe pray for wisdom and guidance and discernment together now? And maybe we can help each other listen for God's direction. Can we pray? Guide us, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrims through this barren land. We are weak, but thou art mighty. Hold us in thy powerful hand. Strong deliverer, strong deliverer, be thou still our strength and shield. Be thou still our strength and shield. Amen. Amen. Take care of yourselves, church. Stay healthy, stay strong. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.